Hello everyone and welcome to the second episode of this short series on how to set up Visual Studio Code for programming in Fortran. Today I'm going to show you how to set up some basic functionality in Visual Studio Code to make your programming life with Fortran much easier. As described in the last video, you can open up Visual Studio Code by just typing code in the command line. Once Visual Studio Code is launched, it presents to you the welcome screen where you can create new files, open a folder, or just open just recently edited files. It also provides to you really interesting links down here in the help section. For example, the keyboard cheat sheet or introduction videos as well as tips and tricks. If you're not interested in loading this welcome screen every time you launch Visual Studio Code, just untick the show welcome page on startup down here. Let us now take a look at some Fortran source code. For this we open the Hello VS Code file from the Explorer on the left of our screen. Since VS Code does not yet know about syntax highlighting for Fortran, the file gets displayed as plain text. We will take care of this later and first try to compile the code. Fortunately, we do not have to go back to the command line to call the compiler, because VS Code has an integrated terminal. You can open the integrated terminal by going to the menu bar and selecting New Terminal, or by just using the hotkey Ctrl in the grave exit. I will now try to compile the code using gfortran. As you can see, the compilation process did not succeed and we get a line truncation error. This is because line 11 exceeds the maximum number of characters, which is 132 in modern Fortran. This is a quite common and easily introduced error. To help us avoid such errors in the future, we can configure Visual Studio Code such that it shows a ruler at column 132. For this we need to open the settings by going to the menu bar, selecting Preferences and Settings. Alternatively, you could also press Ctrl and Comma. To add a new ruler, we search for rulers in the search bar where we find the editor rulers entry. Next we have to open up the settings.json file by clicking on the provided link. We can now add a new entry to this file. This will now set the ruler in column 132. If you would like to change the ruler color, you can easily do this with another entry. Finally, we have to save our settings.json file by hitting Ctrl S. And you can see now that there is a ruler appearing here on the right side of the screen, which has a light blue color. Let's close the settings for now and return to our source file. Thanks to the ruler, we can now directly see that line 11 exceeds the maximum number of columns. To get rid of the error, we break line 11 by using the ampersand. Let us now recompile the code. We can see here that we get rid of the line truncation error. Unfortunately, there is still some other error in our code. Before fixing this bug, let me first show you how to install a really handy extension. It will not only help us finding the bug more easily, but also provide us with proper syntax highlighting and many more interesting features. To install new extensions in Visual Studio Code, we have to click on the Extensions button on the left side. Here we can now search for Fortran extensions by typing Fortran into the search bar. Let us choose Modern Fortran. To install it, just click the Install button. The extension is now successfully installed. Let's go back to our code. Not only are we now provided with a proper syntax highlighting, making the code much more readable, we can also see an error message popping up at line 8. 
If we hover over this message, we can see the compiler's error message popping up in this little box. This function can come in really handy because it points us to errors before compiling the code. We can now fix this bug shortly and recompile the code again. Now the code has compiled successfully. If we now call the executable, we see that our code printed a nice welcome message to the command line. Another really helpful extension is the Fortran IntelliSense package. Let's install it by clicking the Install button. After installation, you see an error message which says that the Fortran IntelliSense extension has not been found on the system. To come over this problem, you have to install the Fortran language server to your system. This can be done by using the package manager of Python. Just type pip3 install fortran minus language minus server. Now the Fortran language server should have been installed correctly. The new Fortran package might not work until you have restarted the editor. To do this, you can hit Ctrl Shift P to open up the command palette. Now just type reload window and execute. This will reload Visual Studio Code for you. Next, I'd like to show you some of the features of the Fortran IntelliSense package. For this, I go back to the source code. Here, I get rid of the assignment for name on the top. And instead, I will call a function that is defined in the get name file. By typing call and the name of the function, we directly get autocompletion from the IntelliSense. You can autocomplete by hitting tab. If I now open up the brackets, I can see a little box where I can see the parameter name as well as its type. Another nice feature is that if I hover over the function, I can directly see the comments for this function as well as the parameter set. We can also right click on the function, select go to definition, and we are brought directly to the file and the definition of the subroutine. These are just a few nice features of the IntelliSense that can make programming much more comfortable. Feel free to play around and find out more about all the other features. Alright everyone, that's it for this video. In the next episode, I'm going to show you how to automate your building routines in Visual Studio Code. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment below. If you liked the video, I would be happy if you hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. See you next time. Bye bye.